wine snubs welcome to another episode of wine snub tv today we are celebrating uh, global drink wine day it's february 18th yes <laughs> <laughs> good job wine snub. Yes. february 18th is global drink wine day so why not why not get together and do um what quick... you what you do best right <laughs> <laughs> so um just before we started, I was going back and forth with Crystal here, uh, who was kind enough to join us on our last edition of um, Sangria, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so I was looking for, I was trying to figure out what we were going to pull from the cellar for Global Drink Wine Day. And um, we had quite a bit of a mini summit on this. Was it going to be local? And I was going you know, the local route. So wine from here from California and it completely went off on that tangent. And uh, she was gracious enough to reel me back in and said, well, since it's Global Wine Day, why don't we do something a little more global than the usual, which is heavily Californian wines? Because we are here in California, of course. And California wine is pretty good. Yeah, we got good stuff. Could be biased, but... <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> so, so I, I, I was asking you, you know, trying to run through the different characteristics that you like about wine. You know, do you like a little more oak, a little less oak? Do you like a little more fruit, a little less fruit? Do you like it super spicy and then high alcohol or more moderate? And um, what we, what I kind of settled on, I thought would be a good compromise. Compromise, a good balance. <laughs> For her, um, obviously everything in the cellar I like, yeah. <laughs> um, was this right here. Um, this is a Cab Sauve from Colchagua Valley in Chile. I've reviewed their wine before and was really impressed with what they do. Um, and uh, I thought this would be a good match for her palate. So we're gonna find out night <laughs> for global drink wine day so um definitely let me know what you're opening for global drink wine day i'm really curious i learn a lot by asking you guys for you know uh, tips on what you're opening and what you like i've discovered many interesting exciting regions cochago valley is one of those that popped up last year when i asked readers what they're what they recommend, what regions they like. And uh, I was very impressed. Um, this is 95 points by James Suckling and a host of 90 something points from other wine reviewers. So um, that says a lot about uh, this winemaker. So what do you think? Of I have some <laughs> high expectations. <laughs> Let's have fun with it. <laughs> yes, no pressure. <laughs> okay, so, um, Let's, let's uh, dive in. Let's see uh, what this is about. So do you like um, the cab? Cab uh, varietal? I do. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2017, this one is a 2017. Um, so it should be um, just, it should be fairly approachable right now. Um, Usually cabs require a little more time, a little time in the bottle, but it just depends on the winemaker and how they make the wine. Um, but uh, cabs are always better with a little more time. Uh, but tonight will give us an idea of whether or not we should open the rest of them <laughs> or let them lay down. <laughs> and Which means we'll be sleeping in tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, for you. Thank you. Tonight, we're bring out our labware, periodic wineware, <laughs> periodic table wine um, glasses, and we are going to do a proper ex exploring of this wine. Proper so, lab experimentation. Right. You know, as a wine snob, you can't take yourself too serious. So we're gonna have a little fun tonight. I like using these little small, me medium-sized beakers. They make a perfect decanter, great <laughs> surface area, and a nice conversation piece, just like 
these periodic table wine glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A lot of wine snobs out there would probably um, not approve of this. A proper, this is not a proper Cabernet glass. Um, can't take life too serious. <laughs> right? <laughs> gotta have fun. We survived oh. a pandemic, we're going through one, you know, we gotta have fun with it. So. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So um, while that's decanting, and uh, let's see, we'll uh, take a little pour and see what it's like straight out of the bottle. Well, you can drink out of that, and I'll drink. I'll drink. I'll just take the whole bottle. <laughs> now you see why I hang out with her. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So let's see what you think. It's very plummy. Lots of plum. I can smell that. Uh, the oak is actually fairly restrained. So I think I scored oh, on that one yeah. too. Yeah, I don't like it too oaky. So yeah. okay, Let's see how this pans out. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of um, of leather in there. Very subtle, like driftwood. Yeah. I like it. I can taste notes of fruit in there. It's a bit velvety on the palate. It has a nice lingering finish. It definitely has some uh, I has can, some tannins in there. Big tannin. It's typical of I, I taste some spice. Do you taste some spice? On the finish there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll get a little bit of a spice tingle. Not too bad. Um, not too overpowering. I can taste that oak. I think that's, that's a nice balance. Yeah medium yeah. would you rate this a 95 points <laughs> we can cut that part <laughs> <laughs> um i you know i think i would have to be able to to answer that question i would have to be able to compare this to other wines in the in that same region Ooh. So she's talking side by sides. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 a good wine. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I think it's well made. Uh, it's definitely young. The way it ex expresses itself in the body, it's got it's got that tight grip on the back. It would be interesting to see what it how it shows after decanting for at least maybe 20, uh, 30 minutes. I'm interested in, in, <laughs> in seeing how exactly, yes, I think yeah, it's I think, good 20, 30 minutes after decanting. Yeah, I think uh, those, those, that big body on the back should mm -hmm. loosen up a little bit. Um, so decanting is definitely recommended for this wine. Um, I think it's well built, there's lots of good plum, blackberry on there. Uh, the oak is just right, it's a measured amount, you know, it's very often it's easy to just go off. The rails with oak, I find, you know, it, it gives too much of that um, vanilla and that sweet essence, which then overpowers all the other elements in, in the varietal. Um, what is it about oak that turns you off? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it's just like anything that goes into winemaking. I think if you have too much of one element, it just completely throws off the experience. It's just not a well-balanced experience, right? Right, yeah. And there's definitely no shortage of that in uh, <laughs> <laughs> in this part of the world. Um, there's a lot of times I've been to some uh, some wineries and you know, every wine you taste is pretty much the same. It's, we're talking and having a laugh about this. Wineries we will not name, but you know, you go- But happen to be in California. Yes. <laughs> not too uh, far from Sacramento. <laughs> And it's just, it's oak, it's fruit, and, and it's alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> it's those three. <laughs> and the oak and the fruit just 
<laughs> completely accentuate each other and it just goes way out of hand and you can't taste anything. You can't pick up the leather, you can't pick up notes of the terroir. You... And the cab and the Syrah taste the same. The cab, the Syrah <laughs> taste all the same. <laughs> the Zin, everything is just all the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely a colorful landscape out uh, here. Um, maybe that's what's great about it. Um, what I find is the style um, so far from what I've tasted from this part of Chile is the style of winemaking actually is reminiscent of Californian wines. You know, that New World style where they're not shy to have a little fruit, you know, in, in, the, ver in the wine. Uh, and you know just throw a touch of oak in there and play around with it um, give it a little bit of that full around their mouth feel uh, wines are probably made more for for more immediate consumption rather than aging uh, so they're not beholden by tradition or culture so just kind of like here in california um, which is a double-edged sword because you know, sometimes you find some very creative takes on different varietals and uh, other times you find some amazing, you know, takes as well on, you know, different varietals here. Um, but yeah, I think this La Postol is, uh, I've always thought the winemaker does a pretty good job. La Postol. I believe that's how it's pronounced, <laughs> La Postol. But it means, what does it mean? The translation of it? Um, you know? I'm not sure, I'll have to look it up, but I want to say... Um, You're yeah. fluent in Spanish, right? Um, well, uh, again, uh, yeah, without being a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it, does it mean the Apostle? I'm, I'm I'm it sure. sounds like it, it means the Apostle. It sounds like yeah. it. We're just going to go with what, you, yes. with what you're saying. You can Google that later. Yeah, feel free to correct me in the comments <laughs> below. Um, I'm by no means a linguistic expert here, <laughs> and Spanish is, I think, my fifth language. Oh, so he's not trying to brag, by the way. No, <laughs> no, he's just, not in this case. <laughs> he's just naturally gifted. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> mm. It's loosening up. It's loosening me up. <laughs> That was a bad joke. That was, no, was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's my kind of humor. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so, um, have you had any other wines from other parts of the world? Have I? France, Italy, Spain, I think those are the common ones. Yeah. I've always wanted to try a wine from Portugal or from Bulgaria, ah, you know. <laughs> I guess we have our work cut out for us. Um, I'm sure we'll have some opportunity on the wine snob calendar for this year. We have a couple varietals um, and if not, we'll make up our own. <laughs> <laughs> have you had, um, have you had like Bordeaux? I have. What do you do? You have any impressions? Did it make any impression, or it's been so long? It's been so long, but I think from my recollection, those are always pretty on the bold side. I want to say um, very bold yes. for me. It'll definitely be bold. <laughs> definitely for any for a California palate. <laughs> I'm a California girl all the for way. Anyone, yeah, for anyone who goes <laughs> tasting here in California, a Bordeaux will definitely be, you know, dry. Um, I remember when um, I first got out here and I was, that when I really started getting to wines was, I was already here in California. So my pala was introduced, you know, the main, my, most of my introduction to wine was here in California. And so I got used to that fruit forward, um, spicy, big bodied um, take on wines. And uh, I remember some of the first my first forays with Bordeaux were, uh, they were a bit much for me. <laughs> <laughs> I found them very dry and, and you know, um, unapologetic, you know, if there's ever a term. 
um, very strict, um, structured. And it wasn't until later on in my wine journey that I developed an appreciation for the Bordeaux. I think they require um, much more age, much more aging than here in Californian wines. And there's a lot more adherence to uh, tradition and there's a, there's a lot more controls, you know, in order to call a wine Bordeaux, you have to at least meet a certain set of basic uh, standards and, and parameters uh, in your wines. So, which is uh, again a double-edged sword. Um, one is the good side, the good uh, part of that, the pro is wherever you buy, buy a Bordeaux, whenever you find a Bordeaux, you can have a fairly high degree of confidence that what you're about what you're going to get, no matter the price point. Um, so you see that label that put, you know, uh, Denomination d'origine contrôlée and all that is a controlled origin um, and it's kind of a stamp of approval and for anything to carry the name Bordeaux um, signifies that it met the, the, those controls. Um, so that's nice. Um, but I think the downside is, I think they could be vastly more creative. You know, with all the experience in growing amazing grapes, I think they could be vastly more creative and make some way more interesting wines. Um, but obviously in California, we don't have too broad of a selection, too eclectic of a selection. Um, distributors who played safe with uh, French wines by the time they make it around the world here. Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to when I finally visit Bordeaux, is I'd like to find those little winemakers that eschew the tradition and, you know, don't care much about the rules and, you know, whether they carry a name or a stamp or not, they just want to make what they feel is a good wine. Right. It would be interesting. Kind of like we do here. And maybe to even just see one that gets a little bit daring and a little creative. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I would, I would love to see it. Kind of like we see here when you go wine tasting. Here you, you meet all these winemakers who have been making it for decades. And um, the, the stuff they do is amazing. You know, really world-class wines that no one knows about them outside of literally the local region and I would imagine there's a similar scene in Bordeaux and different parts of France, Loire Valley is another one that comes to mind and I would love very much to go out and just spend a week or two digging up those hidden gems you know that one guy who's been doing it his whole life. You pack me in, <laughs> in your suitcase I'm coming with you. I think you'll fit, I think you'll fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you probably fit in my camera bag. <laughs> um, the same can be said for um, Italy. I think it's another favorite um, uh, origin that I like to explore with wines. One of my all-time favorite. I'm obsessed with Nebbiolo grapes and um, Barolo, Barbaresco and Nebbiolo from Lange. I love those. Um, I love the way they express themselves. You probably won't like those. They're, sometimes they can get pretty, pretty inky and tar-like, you know, very big, bold, dry, or as I would like to say, masculine grapes, uh, wines, um, that are, you know, completely unapologetic. I think of them as the blue collars, uh, men. <laughs> <laughs> Bordeaux or, you know, um, so to speak. Um, those need, absolutely need, you know, a, a, your typical Barolo or, you know, Lange Nebbiolo, 10 years minimum. And then you start looking at it. Other than that, let it go, even 20 years. Um, but yeah, I think that would be another region I would love to explore. Um, globally speaking, uh, some other regions that you know, um, we're just in the cellar that I found that no one talks about. Bulgaria is one. I have an amazing Pinot that I found in Bulgaria, it's Bul Bulgariana. And uh, I 
I'm definitely building verticals of that one. I think it's a great conversation piece. Fantastic female, amazing for the price. I think it's like somewhere between 12 and 14 bucks or something at Total Wine, but it's a fantastic Pinot. No one hears about it. Um, it's another region. Atacama Desert. One of the best Chardonnays I've ever had was from Atacama Desert. I did a review on that on the channel. Check it out. Um, I think there's, there's a couple of obscure regions. Greek wines I started exploring. Um, it was a white wine from Greece. But what's your thought on that one? It was surprisingly good. It was unexpectedly good. Um, out of the bottle, I remember it. I didn't quite know what to think of it. And uh, it was one of those <laughs> when we had the crazy heat waves this uh, su last summer. And uh, I opened it and um, it was nicely chilled. And initially, I found it dry, tight. Um, and very minerally, very high minerality. And usually those characteristics combine to create a kind of an off-putting bitter tartness. Um, but I found as it opened up, it had a healthy dose for a white wine, healthy dose of tannins that um, once they oxidized from opening up, created this buttery, you know, undertone this creamy undertone. So that was interesting. So it's been on my list to go back to that region and explore more. So. <laughs> <laughs> you make everything sound so delicious. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's just open all the bottles yeah. now. <laughs> open all the bottles. <laughs> all of them. Is it making, is it making a, a better impression as it's opening up? Um, I, I do. I think, I think it is. I love it. I think it would go paired well with some popcorn. <laughs> I was joking with him, telling him, I'm telling him about uh, my addiction to scandal. Not anymore, but when it was a popular thing to watch on television. It's, and, it's a show. And yeah, it's a show on Netflix. If you've never watched a scandal, <laughs> we're not endorsing or anything, but. <laughs> So I was talking Not about sponsored. I was talking about Carrie Washington, um, who plays Olivia Pope in the show, and how on many occasions for dinner she her go-to is a glass of red wine and popcorn. So that's just kind of a little joke. <laughs> but I'm serious. Like I've had plenty of of dinner nights just like that. You know, on a busy busy night, you don't have time to cook. I I have never. <laughs> Combine those two <laughs> deliberately. Maybe I, I have accidentally. This is only when you're living a really chaotic life and you don't have time to cook popcorn and red wine. I mean, I've had mo <laughs> plenty of moments, I can on a weekly basis, where I don't have time to cook, but <laughs> I've never, they've never, both of them have never crossed they've where. never collided. Yes, where it happened to be an evening where I don't have time to cook. <laughs> in an evening where I'm watching something and <laughs> I'm craving some popcorn, so they intersect. <laughs> so apparently, I'm gonna have to try that out. It's a, it's a thing, you just, you should try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, I love it. <laughs> popcorn and wine, interesting. You'll be surprised. Yeah, I learn something new every day. The trick is just to keep an open mind. <laughs> I keep an absolute open mind on wine snob. I try sometimes, despite my better judgment. <laughs> I don't think this would be one of those times. I suspect it would be pretty good. <laughs> It'd be one of those flutes. Maybe we'll do a popcorn tasting next time. Popcorn and wine pairing. Butter popcorn. Mm. Or a kettle. Kettle corn. Cheddar. Cheddar. There's so many options. Yeah, smoked popcorn. Um, Maybe like a savory garlic and onion. Ooh. <laughs> Make the popcorn from like, <laughs> like raw kernels with like garlic butter. It has to be homemade. <laughs> I know there's a whole different like world of heirloom popcorn. <laughs> there's this whole niche. I had a friend who was, uh, really got into it and he would order from somewhere online these 
bags of popcorn that have heirloom and some of them are like crazy colors and stripes and stuff and it tasted really good i mean and he would you know make his pot and he would start it just a few minutes it was, but it was amazing how good that stuff was he made the instant popcorn stuff taste like <laughs> cardboard <laughs> try that out hmm. <laughs> well that's easy you know I didn't have to you know make make her a steak or something no, you know, for being yeah. <laughs> as a host popcorn <laughs> easy easiest thing ever I'm easy to, I'm easy to please <laughs> <laughs> having for global drink wine day are you celebrating share in the comments below i would love to know what interesting regions you've explored recently or exploring tonight um so i can go explore them too especially if i haven't or if you've tried this wine leave comments on yes what you think of this wine definitely if you tried any of the la posto wines or anything from cochago valley or anything from chile um, i would love to know anything you think i should we should Pay attention to, take a look at, explore, and talk about in another uh, segment. I would love to hear from you. Get in touch on Instagram, Twitter, uh, here in the comments below. There'll be links below as well on um, the blog and you know how to get in touch with us. Or if, or if you also partake in popcorn and wine nights too. Let oh us, yes. Let us know. <laughs> yes, if you have any recommendations for popcorn that. Uh, pairs really well with wine <laughs> let us know in the comments below especially for her there'll be a link to her instagram Stop. You, can, <laughs> you can you know let us know we really want to know um maybe so in the next segment you know we'll, we'll we'll pop a bowl of that while we're tasting there'll be a bowl there for her and she can just <laughs> love to know what popcorns <laughs> pair with what wines um and uh there's got to be you can't be the only this person this is the reason why he brings me on here so that i can be an outlet to him for <laughs> for new things for new experiences you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be the only one who I does popcorn can, yeah there has be. to be other people i mean there's seven billion be. people on yeah. the planet right now there has to be like a healthy niche that does just that I think so. Hmm. Yeah, put my put my Instagram profile down there. I want to connect yes. with these people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll be starting a club, <laughs> a subgroup of wine snobs and popcorn, popcorn snobs. I like it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It has a good ring to it. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Very interesting. Well, cheers, wine snobs. Yes. Cheers to 2021. Cheers, wine snobs, and happy Global Drink Wine Day. Happy Global Drink Wine Day. Drink up. <laughs>